All right, folks, don't hate me. And yes, this is another B Link Mini ME review. Hey, bro, come on now, dog. Come <laughs> on, man. Like, bro, bro like, every, hold up, like hold but, but listen, b before you roll your eyes and click away, hold up, young Padawan. This isn't sponsored. No one sent me this for free. I'm not affiliated with B Link in any way. I bought this with my own money, which means you're going to get the uncensored truth. And let's face it, this little guy, this little, little viral NAS box has made its rounds on the internet. So I won't spend much time on the specs, but I'll get more into how I use it and where it falls down and how I see this little thing fitting into so many different setups. So with that, buckle up buttercup because this little box is either the best budget-ish home lab starter I've seen in many years, or it's just a ticking time bomb that you should avoid. Real programmers don't use fancy hardware. This is a RAM extension. This is another extension. It's an EEPROM burner for kernel switches with a speedos cable. But all in all, it's already great out of the box. Hard drives? Wasteful. I have around 400 floppy disks. Let's hit the basics first, quick and painless. This whole thing sits on an Intel 150 all-in-one board that has 12 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. Both the CPU and the RAM are soldered on the board. It includes a 64 gigabyte onboard eMMC storage with Windows 11 already preloaded on it. It has six different NVMe slots. One of those slots will give you full Gen 4 speeds while the other five, unfortunately, will only be capped at Gen 3 speeds. It has a solid heat sink, a whisper quiet fan, and surprisingly good thermals. All, all right, specs done. Now let's get into some of the real stuff. The Mini ME is small, like ridiculously small. Think like one eighth the size of a shoebox. And yet, it feels really solid. It's super well built. And remember those thermals? Well, they're actually excellent and the fan barely audible. Compared to something like my Jones Bow with five spinning drives, this thing is basically silent. This is one of the quietest setups I've ever tested. Look people, quiet still matters. But here is where the reality sets in though. The RAM and CPU, as I mentioned, are soldered on the board, so forget about upgrading this in the future. And those NVMe slots are really a bummer. I mean, one has Gen 4 speeds and the other are Gen 3 speeds. And that's just a physical lane limitation of the processor, the N150. And there's nothing you can do about that. So yeah, while you can fill this thing full of drives, just recognize only one, slot four, is gonna get those fast Gen 4 speeds. And let's be honest though, with this amount of drives, redundancy really isn't optional anymore. And having this small form factor with six drives and eMMC storage makes backup mandatory and an easy reality. Well, I guess it's not mandatory if you want to be that person in the corner curled up crying, talking about, oh, I just wish I would have, have been warned that maybe one of my drives was about to fail. The base unit here starts at 209, lacking any of the NVMe drives, but. You're gonna have to fill up these bays if you are looking to use it as something like a NAS. And having six, you might as well at least try. But that's gonna cost you some money. I mean, take a look at the cost of four terabyte NVMe drives. They are insane. Damn! And sure, spinning drives are way more affordable, but then you lose that whisper quiet, low power magic. So it's a bit of a trade-off. Pay more now up front for NVMEs or just deal with noise and power costs later down the road with things like spinning platters. For me, it's a pretty easy choice. Silence and efficiency wins every single time. So what can you actually do with this little box? Well, a couple different options. Option one, leave Windows 11 on it right on the EMC storage or even put Linux on that. It'll be great for daily use, office work, media consumption, browsing. You can even put Plex on it. Use things like SMB on a Windows system to share files. Even use it as like a retro gaming system. 
And then there's option two. Go full geek. Install NAS software on it. Something like Open Media Vault, True NAS, or my personal choice, Unraid. With all these NAS-based operating systems, you will get the ability to deploy Docker containers, many even with one-click installs. You can also deploy virtual machines, and you get the added ability of health checks on drives, redundancy, and file management from a system designed to do just that. So a little bit about my setup. I decided to dual boot this with Unraid and Windows because, hey, if you're going to give me a free Windows license, I'm going to try to keep it, and I don't think there's any reason to waste it. So I left Windows on the eMMC portion of the system. Then I dropped Unraid onto a USB thumb drive. Yeah, I know. It kind of stinks that Unraid has to run on an external drive, a USB drive, but it does have the added benefit of then making things like dual booting pretty easy. So if you want to do that, you simply just need to go into the BIOS. So when you're booting it up, simply hit the delete key and just keep spamming it. Eventually you'll get into the BIOS. Then you just need to tab over and change the boot order. Make sure you're putting the USB drive as your first boot, and then your second boot should be your Windows boot partition or drive. This way, if I ever need Windows, I can just pop out that thumb drive and it will reboot directly into the Windows install. By using Unraid, or really any of the other popular open source NAS software. As I mentioned, this gives you that data redundancy, easy, easy Docker hosting, and even the ability to spin up virtual machines. But don't get overzealous about the VM possibilities here. The N150 has four cores, so there's not a lot of CPUs to pass around to virtual instances and capping at 12 gigabytes of RAM, same kind of issue, just not a whole lot of RAM to go around either. So sure, plenty of instances are a lightweight, a lot of lightweight Linux distros that you can pin like two gigabytes to and one CPU to, but don't expect to host a lot of things like Docker containers on those instances. While fun to play with, I don't think having it as an always on VM host, for example, is realistic in a production setting. So how does this all stack up compared to something like my beloved Raspberry Pi cluster? Well, it's more powerful, it has better cooling, and really when you think about it, it's cheaper when you start looking at all the things you have to add to a Pi to even make it usable with NVMEs. In the software, well, any of these open softwares compared to something like Synology, or QNAP, you're gonna lose that polished software and official support, but you're gonna save a ton of money going this way and you're gonna get a lot of versatility so you can do different things now or in the future. And of course, versus my Jones Bow build, it's quieter, it's cooler, it's smaller, but you sacrifice the expandability and the ability to use cheaper spinning platter drives. Now I'm not gonna sugarcoat this, the N150 having four cores, four threads, and an internal iGPU is not the most powerful. Thanks to it being a modern Intel chip though, Plexa coding is really great on this thing and retro gaming is pretty good, but don't expect to fire up something like Cyberpunk. And AI, forget about it. Maybe some tiny models optimized for CPU usage, but largely it's gonna be too underpowered to run anything like AI instances or chatbots. Docker though, well, that's a full send, boys. I'd run dozens of containers on this thing without even blinking. Would I love to see B-Link maybe on the next release make this a bit beefier? Gar, absolutely. I'm an American, we love that. But when you start adding things like a Ryzen level iGPU, maybe something with like 16 cores, 14 cores, eight cores, 128 gigabytes of RAM. Well, there's a catch to that because that means more heat, more power, and more noise. So the quiet little magic that we love about this right now might just vanish if they start leveling it up. Let me give you some real world examples though. If you wanted to use it with Windows, put Plex on it, maybe serve a bunch of media files to your entire family, your extended family, a bunch of your friends inside and outside your network, man, it's really good for Plex. 
If you want to stand up a Docker stack, running something like Pi-hole, Home Assistant, Nextcloud, and Jellyfin all together, no sweat for this thing. And of course, retro gaming, I was able to get up to PS2 with even 2X rendering, and it was pretty smooth. So, a not bad retro gamer. And of course, for a small office, handling daily backups without even hearing it spin up like ever, this is a solid choice. And again, if you just want to use it as a daily driver with a whole bunch of storage and a small package, man, have at it. There is a whole lot of capability in something this small, and it represents a whole world of opportunity. At the end of the day, I'm impressed. I've not always been a huge fan of B-Link. I've had a lot of their mini PCs fail because they overheat. But with this one, I think they really did nail the thermal design. And of course, I love the form factor. The documentation is certainly weak, so don't lean on that if you're looking for a whole bunch of documentation for things like how to flash the EMC drive. You know, you're not gonna be able to find that easily. Ensure the storage while well, using these NVMe drives is rather expensive. But for $209, well, you're getting 12 gigabytes of DDR RAM, and really this thing as it stands with adding a couple drives, you could really run your whole home lab in something that fits in the palm of your hand. But should you buy it? Well, if you're new to home labbing or you just want a silent, energy efficient NAS that is a rock star Docker host, this is absolutely worth it. I'll leave some links to this and some of the other things I've used down below. I mentioned I'm not sponsored, but these are affiliate links. It doesn't cost you a thing to use them. However, it goes a long way in supporting the channel. And also, if you like this kind of stuff, please consider liking and subscribing and sharing this. And if you don't mind, drop a comment. Tell me, are you considering getting this mini ME? And if you have one, how are you using it? Anyways, I'm Hill Phantom, and I'll see you next time.